we are with somebody who we've all got a lot of time for, somebody who has worked on all sides of the corporate, entrepreneurial, startup, incubator, every aspect of the ecosystem, he's probably got some experience. So it's a privilege and pleasure to have Mahir Kodura with us from Jordan. We'll talk about the activities that he's currently involved in, talk about his background. But let me kick off, Mahir. Question one. Yes. What's the end game of all of this? Entrepreneurship is the movement of the moment. Where do you see it going? What's, if you're an investor, where's the exit? I tell you, we have to be extremely careful. The wise guys among us that we take this energy and buzz here and translate it into action on the ground. I, 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 I say to the angel investors, to incubators, the venture capitalists, some of the government employees here and their representatives, we need to take this and do something out of this event. And whatever that is happening, there are three to 400 concurrent programs across the Arab world regarding entrepreneurship. We don't want this to be a fad, that after one year or two years it will fade away. We need to create sustainability and we need to start from now working on this. Okay, so if you were charged with developing the execution plan for this, what, what would you do? I tell you, at the end of the day, we are all entrepreneurs. We have to take an entrepreneurship approach to this. We want to start every individual who has an idea, he needs to go start implementing. We were with Habib uh, right now uh, about Yalla Startup. We want the Yalla in everybody. Habib That's Haddad. Habib Haddad. We want everybody to start. Anybody has a dream to start. We want all the angel investors to start getting interest and move on and start taking some risks. We want the incubators. We want more of the incubators around. We cannot have one model. We want to have multiple models. Like what I have at Medan, I have a privately owned incubator. I have my own money investing in startups. I support them and I get other people to come and invest with me. We want action. We want less talk. So this is where I don't believe uh, as much as we can. This is not a government role. The private sector, we need to move on and start working on this. Everybody here, he needs to have his own action plan and start. I cannot put a central approach to this. We need to maintain the momentum and be entrepreneurial about even the ex executing of this. We need to be very entrepreneurial and experiment and we just start. I tell you, I was telling a lady here, young lady, that at Medan, I haven't figured everything out, our incubator, but we are directionally correct. We, it's work in progress iterative strategy. We learn and then we adjust. We learn and we just. I don't have the school answer on this. Just a question that's always interested in me is, is um, you know, if you're a young entrepreneur, do you just go and do it or is a corporate structured career a good building block before you do it? Where, where do, how do you risk manage doing it? We spend uh, yesterday at dinner 45 minutes on this subject we were with Khaldun Tabaza and a group of uh, people who are in charge of incubators there are two schools do we encourage the young kids out of college to start their own business and move on even if they don't have experience or we tell them why don't you go and grab a job for three four years get discipline get some experience and then start your own business there are, there's no right answer for this. My answer to this is I like taking risks. I would encourage everybody who has an idea or a dream, regardless of his age, just start and do it. Go and get a mentor, grab a mentor and work with him. If you believe there is something lacking, experience or whatever, just go and find it. But I don't want, if you have the urge inside you, you have a dream, you have the entrepreneurship bug, inside you, just go out and do it. Don't listen to your mother, to your father. Just go and get started with your own dream. And what's your view of risk? I mean, people talk about uh, the fact that entrepreneurs are risk takers and you'll get some people saying, well, great entrepreneurship is actually about minimizing and managing and controlling risk. Well, how do you see risk in the whole scenario? Listen, I said this publicly 
in Jordan. And my definition of entrepreneur is somebody who does not give a shit. You know, he starts something, he breaks the rules, he jumps in the water, he does not care, he has a belief in himself that he can fix it. We don't want somebody who can, also he needs to develop this, is the idea of seeing around the corner, smelling danger, smelling the opportunity. This comes in with practice and discipline and learning from others. There are lots of people around that he can, he should not wait for them to come and offer their mentorship. He should go. If he likes somebody, he thinks he has something to offer, he should go after him. This is what I used to do. I used to go after people to learn from them and ask them questions. So risk, it's about risks are everywhere. Every, whatever we do, uh, we, we are naive if we believe there are no roadblocks. There are roadblocks. The smart person who plans or he imagines or he puts scenarios, not only by himself but by others, what possibly can be a problem? What possibly, how, wh how should, if I face this, what should I do? So he needs to go through all these scenarios. We call it, I mean, we used to play flight simulator. He needs to do brain simulation of his startup. He needs to fast track it and imagine all the possibilities. How do you learn? What's your uh, way of constantly... Because one of the things that impresses me about you is that you, uh, you're, you're still young in your head. How do you, how do you, how do you keep doing that? Listen, uh, uh, learning by doing is very important. I don't like uh, to boil the ocean. I like to jump in and do something. I like... Uh, I, if, if I think of what I do, I will not do it. Okay? The, uh, I mean, so just start and what I say, directionally correct. Early victories, short answers, short projects, and fix them as you go along. But if you're going to think of the humongous task ahead of you, nobody starts anything. So just start and all the time be open. I, all the time I tell the people around me that you need to create what I call your experience account. You, every time you make a mistake, you charge it to your experience account. And this is how your wisdom wealth, you start building a wisdom account. So start with an experience account and you become a rich man through your wisdom in that account. So the more mistakes you make, I mean, look at it positive. It's an opportunity to learn. Not, uh, I mean, I should not have done it. Just do it and learn, and this is how people, they are successful. Not a single person around this world succeeded from the first time. And how do you pick yourself up from failure? I mean, two things. I, listen, uh, you go through this life, people who have a purpose in life, they jump out of bed in the morning, you know, because they have a purpose, they have a goal. By having this purpose, you, even when you fail, you fail upward, you know, uh, you, you sail further, faster, because you translate this, there's in psychology something they call it reframing, you reframe something to make it positive for you, or negative, I reframe to make anything that happens to me from a positive, uh, a positive twist to it, so I can learn and it provides tailwind for me, not headwind, to my plane. So it's very important that this is how we view our mistakes, our experience. When we have relationship problems, something that does not work, I, does not work with my partner, but you need to keep trying and moving forward and always think of yourself that you are directionally correct, moving in the right direction. Nothing in life works like a bullet train. It's all navigation. You have to navigate throughout this world. And how do you retain positive energy even in spite of difficulties, unexpected events, failure? How do you retain positive energy? I mean, I tell you, I have a saying that passion inspires, but discipline gets you there. I have all the time I work on my discipline to think positively. I reframe. I look at everything that happens to me, uh, that I look at it uh, uh, from my own belief, I, I believe God, everything that happens to you, God wants something good out of it. This is how you need to believe, train yourself, 
discipline yourself to believe in this way and you rewire your brains to think in this way or uh, you will become uh, a fragile person afraid of anything that happens to you afraid of trying afraid of mistakes uh, you start worrying about how people they look at you actually uh, I'm not bothered I mean I have a purpose uh, I think somebody else is judging me not people and this is how I work according to this and in this part of the world are we more susceptible to how other people think of us than say Europe or America of course for us here how other people look at us it's part of our culture you know uh, and this I'm not saying that we should uh, uh, become different no we have to embrace who we are but at the same time we have as people we need to develop what I call this compass in Arabic that always north is north regardless where you are located if you are somebody you are you run you live a purpose for life what other people they say is not important if they are trying in Jordan we say toughest tough station they're trying to put you down it doesn't matter you know so you always take if people they come in and they try to put me down or question my intentions I take this as a challenge to move forward if people they support me with the ideas I take it as well as headwind uh, tailwind so it is all the time this is the way uh, I am against uh, leaving away our culture we want to embrace it but we need to build on it we cannot become hostages to the past we cannot be hostages to our past we need to build on our heritage and move forward this is the critical we, we, we should be stop talking about our problems and talk about solutions we should stop fixing the blame we want to fix the solution you know this is what how we want to work this region we have no choice in order to create jobs for 80 million kids you know we have a duty all of us uh, to deliver on this not talk about it we cannot just sit there and boil the ocean we need to have a duty or we're gonna start falling behind I mean I mean we have a momentum we need to build on how have you changed in the last 10 years what's what's have you have you stayed the same or have you changed or what's how do you think you've changed Hello, of course you change you are a human being you change your priorities change you become wiser uh, 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 you go through difficulties challenges uh, it shapes you uh, the experience it shapes you however uh, uh, you nothing drastic has changed in me other than becoming in certain areas more committed to it uh, because as an individual your priorities change and uh, the major change that happened that I am devoted more to social entrepreneurship than before and uh, I am I have an obsession that we need to package and distribute and deploy uh, our wisdom and our knowledge to the young people using a new media this is uh, the obsession that I have this wisdom running around we cannot just when we die it will fade away because you know in our culture we don't like to we don't write books we don't read we're not like the US people read and they write so we need to find and figure out a way and what you guys are doing at WAMDA with using uh, new media to document experiences this is the way of the future and I believe I have an opinion and a theory that Arabs we will catch up with Arab content through video content not text only thank you my thank fantastic. you fantastic